As it turns out, good evening and welcome to day 38 of 365 Days of Stories with Theo Mayer. Now, I am continuing with the story uh, or the legend of the Moore's legacy. And as you might remember, Perihill had taken the body of the dead Moor and buried it along the banks of the Zeno River. His wife had helped him load the dead body onto the donkey and everything may have gone spotlessly well, except that Perihil's neighbor, Padrio Padrugo, had watched everything happen. And he'd followed, remember, he'd followed Perihil all the way out watched him put the body in the hole, cover it back up. And he made his way back to his home and then to his barber shop very, very quickly. Now, he had a special client. It was the Alcalde. The Alcalde was like the mayor of the town. And Pedrillo Pedrugo went to his house early in the morning, just as the Alcalde was awakening and getting up. And he began to shave him in the typical old style with a sharp, straight razor. Lathered him up with soap. Never used a brush, as was the Spanish way, and began to shave him. And as he did, he began to comment big goings on, he said, oh my gosh. Robbery, murder, and burial, all in one evening. Hmm. Gossip that he was, the alcalde was all ears. What is this you say? Yes, have patience and I will tell you the whole story, Padrillo said. And he began, he began telling the entire tale of the Moor's arrival at Pear Hill's house, what had taken place, the body being put onto the donkey by both Pear Hill and his wife, and then taken out into the, to, to the banks of the Zeno River for burial. The Alcalde, oh my gosh. This is what really got him going. He put a very, very high value on justice. So much so that its weight, well, its weight was measured in gold. He was known as quite the conniving Alcalde. His justice was always, always centered around himself. What profit could he make out of the whole situation? He knew that he had Parahill, but if he just sent him to the gallows, well, what good was that? Better to seek that fortune that obviously Parahill murdered the Moor in order to gain. Well, the Alcalde, he had special men in his service and he chose to call on the one that he could trust the most, the Alguazil, the best of the Alguazil. And an Alguazil is like kind of a policeman. He has authority, he has the law behind him. And in those days, they had a very particular dress uh, that they wore. Um, it was kind of dark, um, dark colors, but they held in their hands, I guess, a, a white wand, which is what they used basically to wield out their punishments to let people know that they were in charge. Now, 
he was sent off to get Perihil. And before Perihil had even fed his donkey, he was just like tending to him a little bit while the Alguazil was there and made Perihil come with him to the Alcalde's house. The donkey was tied up outside. Perihil went in and the Alcalde spared no words. You villain! Ah, there is no getting out of this. I know what you are guilty of. I know the entire story. And it is a fitting place for you to go. The gallows. Yes, the gallows is where you belong. But I understand, I, I, I do understand that it must have been in a, in a fit of religious zeal that you felt impelled to kill that poor Moor. Be that as it may, the only way that I will spare you the gallows is if you will bring to me the treasure of the Moor, the treasure that you murdered him for. Bring that to me and all will be well. Tell me where it is, I will have it fetched. Perihil swore on every saint, beckoned to them to come and prove his innocence. But even though he did, not a single saint appeared to help him out. My good man, Perihil said, after he had told him the entire story. I am telling you the truth. Alcalde felt like probably the story was true, but thought also there must be some profit to be gained from this. Certainly the Moor had some wealth and had bestowed it upon Perihil. Perihil had told him all there was was the box but the Alcalde pressed him. Perihil repeated his story again. It seemed reasonable. So the Alcalde asked, where is this box? Perhaps it is the box that we are looking for. With the jewels and the gold within it. Where is it so that I may see it? Perihil said, well, that is easy. It is on one of the paneers on my donkey. You can go out and get it. The alguazil was out there in a moment and returned with a box in hand. He handed it to the alcalde and the alcalde very carefully opened up the lid. Everyone peered inside to see what was there, but there was only a piece of scroll that had Arabic symbols on it and the, well, the end of a taper, a, a candle that had been mostly used. And that is all that there was, hm, said the Alcalde. Well, he had the Alguazil go to Perihil's house and he returned with Perihil's wife separately she was interrogated, and her story was the same at Para Hills. So, really, the Alcalde had nowhere to go with the whole thing. He felt certain that they must be innocent, and so he said, Para Hill, this time I will set you free. But payment for my time, my precious time, Sorry, but you will have to leave your donkey with me. What could Perihil say? Nothing. The Alcalde had the law behind him. Off he went. And now he was back where he had started many years before with only an earthen jug to carry on his shoulder to fetch the water and bring it to his clients. For once, 
as Purahil was going up the mountains. His mood was not good. No songs came forth, only curses for the Alcalde. What a horrible man, he kept thinking to himself. What a horrible man to take from him what was so important for him to gain his wealth and take care of his family. Well, some days passed, and I will tell you, Parahill's wife was not light on Parahill. She let him know that he had messed up, made a mistake, had really been in the wrong, that his hospitality this time had certainly gotten the best of him. And every chance she had, she wielded cruel words on Parahill just to let him know that he'd better not do that again. One hot afternoon, Parahill had gone into the house. He was taking a small break in the cool, as often was the case in the afternoons. Everyone took a bit of time to escape the heat. And there on a shelf was the Moore's box. It was half open as if mocking him for having done what he did. At one point he got up and took the box and he said, how I wish I had never set eyes on you or that man whose possession you were in. And with that, he took the box and he threw it against the wall. Now, the box was made out of stout sandalwood. It did not break, but out upon the floor landed the scroll and the taper. Parahill stared at that scroll for some time. He could not decipher the Arabic symbols, but there they were. And a thought began to cross his mind. Perhaps there is something to that scroll. Why would the Moor treat it as such a treasure? Hmm. The next day, he had the box with him and he went to a market area. I think it was called the Xanatin. And in that market area, there was a Muslim, a Moor, and he had beautiful goods. He was originally from Tangier and he was selling his goods there near the Alhambra in Granada. And Parahill went up to him and he handed him the scroll and he said, can you make anything of this? And he looked at it and he, he read it and he said, well, it is an enchantment. Uh, it, supposedly, you know, if you say these words, uh, it can release enchantments, but there's a problem because there's supposed to be a candle with it as well. And if you don't have the candle, it won't work. And Parahill said, okay, okay. But you know what those symbols are and what they mean. He said, oh yes, yes I do. And Parahill knew that he had the taper. And he took the scroll back and thanked the man and wandered away to deliver more water. And as he did, he began to think and think. We'll leave him there, thinking, and tomorrow we'll pick up where we left off and find out what Perihill does with that scroll. Okay, hope you have a good rest of the evening. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you tomorrow.